viruses, bacteria, microorganisms. You hear those words and you think <coughs> about coughing, sneezing, getting sick. It's true, germs can be our enemies. Beginning in the 19th century, when germ theory was first proposed, we drew battle lines between us, the afflicted hosts, and them, the invading species. And then we identified which diseases are associated with which microbes and develop ways to defend ourselves against them through immunization, through sanitation, and through better living conditions. But today, scientists recognize that there's a need for a more ecological view of the microbial world around us. Microbes and their hosts depend upon each other for survival. Sure, the scene stealers are the germs that make us sick. They get all the attention and they give all the other microbes a bad rap. But the fact is, most microbes don't cause illness. In fact, many of them protect us. They help our body function properly and they battle with the harmful organisms in this constant conflict for habitable space in our body. So in the beginning, it was all microbial. Then our ancestors arose and came along and we evolved from them and we evolved in a microbial world. Well, microbes are in us, on us, and all around us, all the time. In fact, our bodies contain at least 10 times as many bacterial cells as human cells, which blurs the line between where microbes end and humans begin. Virus absolutely requires another cell for its growth, and it does not carry the machinery that it needs for its own replication. It is not independent. Bacteria, on the other hand, are much larger. They're single cell organisms. They can live in the environment and replicate in the environment. And some of them, the bad ones, can gain access to the body, infect us. Eukaryotes are complex cellular life forms. They have internal structures. And of those eukaryotes that cause disease, we have fungi. And then we have some worms and some protozoa. And those are the, the major classes of disease-causing organisms. Microbes have inhabited the Earth for billions of years. They occupy every conceivable ecological niche. They're in the water, they're in dirt, they're in the air, they're in plants, rocks, animals. They're everywhere. They even occupy the Earth's most extreme environment. In fact, by mass alone, Microbes are the most abundant life form on the planet, and they're highly adaptable to changing environments. Microbes are truly clever. They have thousands of solutions to problems we haven't even thought about because they've encountered them already. A handful of deadly diseases claims millions of lives every year. HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, malaria, diarrheal diseases, lower respiratory tract infections. Together they account for one-fifth of global deaths annually. And scientists continually monitor influenza outbreaks. Influenza has a history with us that we can point to. It it's, was the cause of the, the largest amount of infectious disease death in humans this last century. Migrating aquatic birds are the original source of all flu strains. The virus spreads when droplets from a sneeze or a cough from an infected person comes in contact with someone else. But there are other ways for diseases to spread as well. We've had a number of experiences with so-called cross-species transmission of, of microbes uh, spreading from animals uh, to people, sometimes directly, sometimes via uh, an insect vector, so that people can acquire an infection uh, in a faraway place and uh, even before they're ill, be home. We know that there are things that you can do to protect yourself against infections. Immunizations are critical to protection against influenza and other infections. Every public health official will tell you to wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water and cover your mouth, cover your nose when you cough or sneeze. And to thoroughly cook your meat, your poultry, and your eggs to avoid foodborne illnesses. For the past 70 years, antibiotics have been medicine's magic bullet. 
Tens of thousands of lives have been saved annually, but those magic bullets are starting to lose their power. Antibiotic resistance is an immense public health and individual health problem right now. Shortly after penicillin was uh, introduced, resistant infections began to be identified. Any good life form will seek all possible ways of accommodating an adverse condition like the threat of death. And so what microbes do is they find mutations and changes that are protective for them. Again, there are things you can do to protect yourself. Don't take antibiotics if your healthcare provider has said they're not necessary. But if you are prescribed antibiotics, take every pill. Don't hold back on a dose and save it for another day. And don't take antibiotics for viral infection like a cold. They don't work. Factors related to society, the environment, our global interconnectedness can all increase the likelihood that disease can emerge and spread, but... The best we can do is sign a peace treaty with the, uh, the bad microbes. Remember that the vast, vast majority of that microbial world is beneficial to something. It's beneficial to the planet. It's beneficial to all of the hosts on which they reside, including us.